Brought to you by Eco Alkaline's environmentally responsible batteries, cat5.tv slash eco. Hello, Cat5. I recently viewed your YouTube hey. video on Wirecast from last April. All right. Of all the videos I've seen on Wirecast, yours was the most helpful and informative. You know what? I appreciate you leaving that in. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. So thank you. I have a couple <laughs> questions, though. One, you put your cameras on separate USB cards, even though the cards are USB 3.0. Oh. Yes. I take it the cameras themselves are 2.0. If the cameras were 3.0, yes. would one 3.0 card be able to handle all of them at one time? And that's his first question. Yes and no. Well, here's the thing is that I as soon as you put multiple devices onto any USB bus, it splits it in two for two devices. It splits it in three for three devices. So if you've got a USB 3 card, yeah, that does really good speeds. But as soon as you plug four cameras that are HD 1080p into that, traveling at a zip zabbity 480 megabits a second, I don't know, uh, you run the risk of oversaturating that bus. And then what happens with webcams? They turn off and you completely lose signal. So that's a problem. So to avoid that, not that that would happen because we know USB 3 is able to handle a lot more, but I am opposed to putting too many things on any bus. Children... For example, no, we're not talking about that kind of bus. We're talking about a, a USB bus, the card that you put, put in your computer. So I didn't plug any of those cameras into the computer itself. I plugged them into a PCI Express card, and I put three of them, one for each camera. And that's so that that's not because the ca card couldn't handle more than one. It's so that each camera had its own separate, individual, dedicated bus. So that means it had its own PCI Express port, it had its own USB 3 port, and it was not going to be oversaturated by any means. There was a lot of uh, empty overhead, a lot of room for even more power. So, yeah, that's that's why I did that. Better safe than sorry. They're 12 bucks a card, so why not, right? There's more to it? Yes. All right. He has a second question. I noticed that one of your cameras, I believe it's your backstage pass camera, mm. is mounted on a standard four-foot tripod. Is that a live cam also? If not, is a live no. cam able to be mounted on a four-foot tripod? If you're watching, if you see backstage pass, this is the camera that you're talking about. This is the old backstage pass camera that I'm touching right now. That is a Sony Handycam because it has Firewire and it has every kind of output, USB, uh, it's, it's, you know, the quality is not what it is from an HD camera, but it is, it was a cheap solution at the time, but it's a big honking camera. Let me just grab over here. Uh, that's a Microsoft Life Cam. And you see that, yes, this indeed does have a threading for a tripod. So that's brilliant. This is the Life Cam Studio. You can get one at cat5.tv slash cam, C-A-M. And the reason, you know, one of the reasons I love this so much is the fact that it does have a threading. It can sit on a tripod. You can put it on, sometimes I use just those little tiny tripods and I set it on a desk and it works as a kind of a desktop webcam. Or it has this flexible kind of grip that it can grip onto your monitor. And they're 1080p. And they're cheap. I mean, go to cat5.tv slash cam, and you'll see that for a uh, 1080p camera, it's dirt cheap. So, can't beat it. And it works in Linux. <laughs> Category 5 TV is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. Thanks for watching.